these doors can be a real pain to open. So when you're using this thing for storage and you don't really need to open this full door all the time, it's super handy to have a, have a walkthrough door. I'm also going to time this just so we can all get an idea how long it takes to use a zip disc to cut this door out. Zip disking stuff really ain't that bad as long as you, in my opinion, know that, that grinder trick where it doesn't jump. Because that can be the scary thing about, about zip dip grinders in general is whenever they jump, you know, those of you that might be new around a grinder, it's intimidating whenever it jumps and you get scratched one time or if you get it real good one time, it can be intimidating. Although I'm not a huge fan of working in the rain. Welding and rain just don't really go together, you know. Uh, I've talked a lot about making projects more enjoyable. If it's raining and, and you're welding and your clothes are getting wet, that just, that kind of makes the enjoyable, you know, go downhill a little bit. Material here and just letting the puddle flow over to this real thin material. And then I'm going back over it with 7018. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. This morning, I am just easing on into the little town of Perkins, Oklahoma. Uh, today we're going to be installing a commercial door in a container, in a metal container. This will be my first time installing a door in a container. I've installed, I've only installed like, I don't know, maybe three or four doors in my lifetime, I believe. Two that I can think of right off the top of my head for that 50 by 100 metal building that we built. But if you want to go check out those videos, we'll link them down below or you can probably just search Austin Ross 50 by 100 here on YouTube and uh, find those videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Austin Ross. I've been a mobile rig welder for 17 years or so. If you are just now starting your mobile welding journey and you want to learn more about mobile welding, maybe fabricating pipe fence or how to put together a uh, affordable welding rig, check out our trade school website, arosswelding.school. You can find the quick rig course and the pipe fence fence course over there. Also check out our website arosswelding.com under the education tab and under the resources tab. There will be several tools lists whether you're wanting to get into pipeline or just mobile rig welding in general. One of my favorite lists there on the website is the five hustler mindsets. These are five mindsets that I truly believe have helped me get to where I am today. It helped me get into pipeline work. It helped me do good in, in pipeline work. Mobile welding in general, you know, I talk about learning something every day around here and those five hustler mindsets are ways that I've uh, tried to program my mind and that I'm continually learning to program my mind today. And what it comes down to is just trying to keep positive inputs coming into my mind. But check out that five hustler mindset list if you're uh, feeling down or unmotivated. But also, like I said, there's tools lists and everything there on our website. Like I said, that's arosswelding.com. Head on over there and check it out. And enjoy the video but anyway I'm excited about this uh, installing this door uh, because we actually need to install one at our house in the container at our house we have a container that we use for personal storage and for a little bit of uh, storage for our online store the little building that we uh, sell products out of the in the Aros welding store is just not quite big enough for all of our supplies and whatnot so uh, and I've been needing to put in a walkthrough door. Uh, yeah, walkthrough door, by the way. Did I even say that? That's what we're installing is a walkthrough door. So we've been needing to install a walkthrough door in the container there at our house. So this will be nice to uh, get some experience, if you will. Again, I want to thank Daryl up here at Railroad Yard here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. He literally, any anything I need to know about, about metal buildings, I just get with him and he can quickly, he can usually show me something there on Railroad Yard's property, you know, and kind of give me an example. And that's what he did here. He showed me a container that was right outside their office, the way they done it, and uh, and that's the way we're going to do it because it's it's simplified. That's what I like about most things that Daryl shows me is when it comes to metal buildings and stuff, things are simplified. And to me, that just shows years and years of experience whenever you've You've done something time and time again and you've learned you know the the simple way or the you know most well simple i'll just leave it at that most simple simple way so uh we're pulling up to the location now and uh we'll get out and assess the situation here it is the project at hand let's get the old pick them up staged here i went and picked up a door yesterday it was all in a package. I just took it out because I had it on a trailer. And so I put it all on my truck like this so I wouldn't have to haul a trailer. And the plan is to 
use this half by eight flat to frame the door. So we'll put our door jam together and then pull a measurement and then add one inch for that half inch and that should be our measurement. So first things first, we gotta get all this stuff off of my toolboxes so I can get to my tape measure and stuff and then we will start pulling measurements. All right, we got everything off the truck. I call this staging, you know? Getting the truck toolboxes open, getting material out ready to work with. And so now we're staged. They got stuff out of the way for us and I'm just gonna put it right here, as close to this wall as, as possible, I reckon. These doors can be a real pain to open so when you're using this thing for storage and you don't really need to open this full door all the time it's super handy to have a have a walk through door this door is a universal door we can bolt this on whichever side we want and so we can the door can either swing out in left right it doesn't matter you can set it up to wherever wherever you like so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hinge it I believe I'm gonna hinge it from this side and we're going to open it to the outside. That way it comes all the way back around up against this right here. Zach, the uh, manager for the co-op, he wasn't too particular about how it, how it swung. And I told him that you can justify just about any which way you want it to swing. I, I just know that from experience from thinking about gates and stuff. There's some situations where you know for sure you don't want it to swing you know, one way or another, like one thing, you know, he did throw out was that he thought it would be nice for it to swing out, which I think is a good idea for a small space. That way you're not swinging your door into, you know, if you do end up maximizing your space in your container. So uh, swinging out is, is important in a container, and in my opinion, depending on, depending on your situation. did that wrong have mercy I'll say it like a early mentor of mine a, the welder foreman his name was Bobby Flores he was kind of the shop foreman or he was the shop foreman whenever I worked at Stillwater Steeler after high school and Bobby taught me a lot of, a lot of things and uh, but he would do something you know silly like I just did and he'd Bobby would say oh dadgummit let me get my SHIT together so I'll say like Bobby says, let me get my let me get my stuff together here this morning. And we'll get on a roll here. Just four bolts in the top of this bad boy. It's gonna end up being welded, so it doesn't really, you know, it's the holes are loose too, so I mean you can you can get her get her where you like it. Like I said, I just need a measurement. And then I'll also take a measurement of our door. Make sure it's gonna fit in that door jam. All the all the good little fabrication things if there's one thing I've learned over the years of doing a lot of stuff for the first time that is for one making sure you have everything before you get started because of the measurements measurements are critical and manufacturers change stuff from time to time so I don't care how many times I've hung a certain gate I always like to have the gate there whenever I'm setting the post so like here I like that I have the door here I wanted to make sure I had the door here I planned yesterday a full day to make sure I got everything I needed. And I'm glad I did because railroad yard was out of stock with these doors. So I had to go to Oklahoma City and get it. So anyway, but I wanted to make sure I had the door here before I ever started anything. But one of those reasons is so you can get measurements. Actually just half an inch taller on this side because we're only putting a half inch flat on top. But half inch, so half inch taller here. So 87 by 40 and three quarter plus one inch 41 and three quarter one thing that's coming to mind is uh shims i did get some shims that's one real important thing when installing a door so all that says i think it's definitely better if my hole's slightly bigger because just like hanging a gate we want to make sure this thing functions very nice like we will only be stitch welding this and then we'll put we'll be putting silicone in the rest of it so anyway i got my measurements <laughs> these should be tight measurements so i'm going to go ahead and lay out for 41 and three quarter by 87. Yeah. 
so this container isn't level. So to get an accurate measurement going up, I'm gonna pull off of this solid piece right here to my mark. So we got seven inches. So now I can just go up here, mark seven inches. I'll even make one in the center. Line these two marks up. And yeah, that matches the, the way the container sits. It's right in this line over here. And that's what this is showing. So, so now that we got seven inches there, we can pull our 41 and seven eighths here. And now, should be able to just connect the dots. Hello. And I have a feeling that I'm gonna have to, uh, mm -hmm. I still haven't decided if I'm gonna use a zip disc or a torch. I really wanna use a torch. And I mean, I believe it's possible. You just gotta angle it, you know, angle your torch like this and point and just go pretty quick to lessen the, the warpage. But, but the only trouble with that is your torch usually burns off the paint, so therefore burns off your line. That's where the zip disc wouldn't do that. So just one of them deals. Plasma would be ideal here for sure. One of these days we'll get professional and get us plasma. I have access to a plasma, but I don't have access to a, I say I don't have access, not as good of access to a compressor, air compressor to run the plasma. So. <coughs> Uh, uh, so test my measurement one more time 41 and a little over three quarter by 87 final answer now it's time for the exciting part the cutting <clears throat> I think I am going to use the zip disc my lines picture of my line close up I'm also going to time this so it's 8:23 right now and I just started the camera so the camera's actually my timer right there so just so we can all get an idea how long it takes to use a zip disk to cut this door out take a guess in the comments how long do you think it'll take us So the zip disc I'm using to cut this out is Razor Blade 27. It's a six inch 045 thickness. And then it has the hub, you know, the threaded hub uh, pressed into it. So in my opinion, this is much safer, but um, I just wanted to let you know what I was using. And then we'll also, I'll also let you know how many of these it takes me. Uh, this one was already slightly used, not much used, but slightly used so so there's tension on it uh, I've, I've been trying to keep my zip disc straight, but it keeps wanting to turn my grinder this way, and that's because this, I don't know if it's because it's bent right here. It could just be because it's cord, you know, because it's got these brakes in it. Uh, that's, that's normal when cutting metal is to, you know, there's just gonna be pressure. Uh, a lot of times, sometimes there's gonna be pressure, so it's good to expect pressure and, and just kind of watch it as you're, you know, assess what's going on here. That way you don't get hurt. You'll also notice I'm scribing it a little ways and then I'm cutting it. One very important safety thing 
that I want to bring up is running this grinder. Always grind with your, like if you're looking at the grinder like this, always grind with this side of your grinding wheel and keep this handle close to what you're cutting. The further this handle, if you're grinding with this side, the further this handle gets away, and for starters, the further this handle gets away, the more you're cutting up here, and then that's whenever it starts to jump. So you'll notice as I'm cutting this, I'll always be, like when I cut the top, I'll do this number. And then when I cut this other side, I'll do the same thing I did here. I won't turn it, I won't be having it like this. You can do it like this, again, keeping it close as possible, but it's way less likely, way more likely to jump on you. So just a huge safety grinder tip is, is to keep it uh, grind with. If you're looking at the grinder like this, the right side, right here, and then keep your handle close to your material. Still on the same zip disc. Zip disking stuff really ain't that bad as long as you, in my opinion, know that know that grinder trick where it doesn't jump. Because that can be the scary thing about, about zip di grinders in general is whenever they jump, you know, those of you that might be new around a grinder, it's intimidating whenever it jumps and you get scratched one time or if you get it real good one time, it can be intimidating. But once you know that trick about keeping it, keeping this handle close to your material and using this side of the disc, that minimizes the danger tenfolds. And if you're using a quality disc like this with the hub built in, look, it lasts longer, it's safer. And uh, also all I was saying was, I sometimes dread zip disking stuff, but as I'm kind of going through it slowly here for, for YouTube here, I'm, I'm learning that it's really, it's not that bad once you know these little things and another thing is earplugs and a face shield, a full face shield. Like that's why I love this flip on my hood because, well again, the full face shield in case something does happen, but also getting stuff in your eyes. Whenever you're grinding with a grinder, it's very common for, you know, to get stuff in your eyes. I've got stuff in my eyes a lot over my years of welding and running a grinder. So um, again, that's one thing that I dread about using a zip disc is the sparks. But when you know that trick, you know, to keep your grinding safe and you have a face shield to minimize the, and literally this little thing I'm doing right now, I'm moving myself over just a little bit. That way my sparks are right to this side of me and they're not going up my hood because a second ago my ladder was over here a little bit too far and I was right in front of my grinder and them sparks were hitting me and going right up my hood. And again, more chance of something getting in your eye. So being on this side of, the, of your work helps also. And I'm right-handed. Those of you that are left-handed, you're on your own. Or get with my brother, he might be able to tell you. Rodney Ross, Mid-State Welding. He'll be able to tell you he's left-handed. He might have some, tip, some tips and tricks on left-handed grinding, because I don't know. Here's what it looks like so far. We got both uprights cut, left a tab on the top. Got the other upright cut, upright cut. Now that bottom, I'm fixing to take my torch and do that. I think that'll be a little quicker and I'm not worrying about warping down there. So I'm gonna get my torch, scrape that off and then take a grinder and clean all this up.
There we have it. Now we have a door. Come on. So this here is called a scarfing tip. And it's real similar to like an art gouger. So I'm just, to save me some grinding, I'm just taking away all this, this weld that's right here at the bottom of this container. See, it just washes away. It minimizes your chance of getting into your, your base metal. It saves you a lot of grinding. I've already done all that, so. Now, and there's a couple hooks. Hook here that I cut off and hook over there like this. And I cut off, so now I'll take a sanding pad. Probably pour a little water on this. So that wood don't burn anymore. And then I'll take a sanding pad and clean all that up. Another good area where my skill saw would be handy. This is what you call a bad habit. I say that lightly, but my habit is using a torch. That's what I did for so many years. And there's a time and a place, you know. I guess my simple mind just since I don't have a truck and like a bed with all the <clears throat> boxes to hold all the stuff, I have to be strategic about what I carry on my truck on the daily. And uh, <coughs> therefore I just always on my torch because it's always on my truck but I do foresee uh, myself creating a habit of using steel saw and plasma it's just, it's just a matter of starting to do stuff that way that way that becomes the habit you know? Hear the alligator chomping at it. Things ain't warm enough. If you hear it like spitting in a sputter, and you kind of you can tell it's it's not cutting smooth. So we got our uh, uprights cut, our eight inch flat. Started to rain a little bit, so I took an early lunch. Went and got some subway and a taller ladder while I was out and about, you know, take advantage of the, the time, you know, try to spend my time wisely while it's raining, you know. And I needed to grab some liquid nails anyway, so it kind of worked out. Took an early lunch, got my taller ladder, got some liquid nails for the jam, and then the uh, door jam. And now I'm headed back. Had some Subway for lunch. Mm, still sprinkling, as you may be able to tell. But supposedly, it's supposed to stop here soon. So, uh, And if it's just this light sprinkle, I can still... You know, I'm, I'm halfway in the container, you know, on some of this. So, it's not, not too big a deal. Although, I'm not a huge fan of working in the rain. Welding and rain just don't really go together, you know. Uh, I've talked a lot about, you know, making projects more enjoyable. Well... If, if it's raining and, and you're welding and your clothes are getting wet, that just, that kind of makes the enjoyable, you know, go downhill a little bit. So, not to mention just the quality of work, you know, the, the more 
happier I am, the more I'm enjoying my work, the better my end product is, the better the better work I do. And I think that's true for all of us. So I'm not a huge fan of working in the in the rain, but if but if it's just this light sprinkle, I might get out and tack something. You know, I can stand inside the I got my flat standing up inside there as you'll see shortly. And uh, I can kind of work in kind of inside the container. Yeah, I'm excited. Having a little coffee for dessert. Come on. <laughs> you betcha. You betcha. Uh, the the game plan is just to stand that, stand each piece of flat up on each side. And I think I'm going to roughly center it, you know, in the, in the container there. Makes the most sense, I think. Or I might make it somewhat flush on the outside. That might be better. That's what I haven't decided, but I'll, but I'll look at it. Get my piece on this side standing up, and the piece on this side of the door standing up. And then I'll take my, since I'm by myself, you think of these things when you work by yourself, you think about which way to go about it. And I'll take that top piece and just set right on top of my two side pieces. Set it right in there and uh, get everything you know square with the container. Tack it off. And, dry fit that door make sure the door fits if the door don't fit I'll have to uh, in fact I'll probably take a measurement after I get one side tacked up one side of my uh, framing tacked up with my flat I'll take a measurement and make sure we're not too tight because I may need to go ahead and sand down that one side to make sure you know the door fits because I don't want it to be too tight that is a big no-no with any opening you know gate, doorway, whatever, like you don't want it too tight because then you can't close it properly. Anyway, I'm going to finish this old coffee while we ease on back to the project. Another reason I like taking an early lunch is because it's less busy, so your lunch goes just a little quicker. The guy that actually hooked me up with the co-op, I call him my dirt guy, uh, because he has equipment and does dirt work and stuff, and, uh, and he subs most of a lot of his welding to me and my brother-in-law and whatnot uh, nowadays versus doing his own welding. So anyway, uh, he actually goes to lunch at 11 every day for that reason he also gets started probably eats breakfast about six in the morning so you know what i mean it makes sense to eat at 11 so i personally don't mind that schedule i don't i'm not strict on it but but i wouldn't be opposed to kind of getting in that rhythm because because it's way more enjoyable there again enjoyable to go order food and like he sits down that the, my dirt guy he sits down uh, goes in and sits down not every day but most days he goes to a restaurant and he sits down and it and it goes fairly quick because it's 11 and everybody else is still out working and not taking lunch yet there she is waiting on us by the way this is the only zip disc that I used I didn't even have to use that new one so I done this whole I done this 7, 14, plus 3, uh, 17, 17 linear foot of this thin gauge container with this, this zip disc right here. I probably shaved off, I don't know, a half inch or something of this right here. So pretty good zip disc. And it took me, I'm just going to call it an hour to cut this hole out and clean it all up to get us to this point. Not counting cutting our flat to length. Now, as long as this piece is square with the inside of here, pretty close there. Now we should be able to do back here. Well, I really need to get this squared away. Let's do it up here. 40 and a little over three quarter, which is perfect. And out here, we need to be 40 and three quarters. See, that means that's pretty square up here. 
<clears throat> I was just trying to square the face of this one with the face of this one. Make sure these are both running parallel with one another versus one of them being tweaked one way or another, you know, angled too far in that way or angled too far out this way. But I need to, I got a gap here. I need to push this in all the way down. Got it dry fit. Still need to put my top piece in, but I just wanted to make sure this would fit before I got too carried away. The measurement shows it's gonna be pretty good. I'm fixing to check how this door goes in, make sure I'm putting it in the correct way. I think it goes in just like that. Uh, I might go the other way. The hinges need to be out here. Dang, I don't think I did anything. There it is, there it is, there it is. Okay. I believe something like that. I believe. Alright, got my door hung the old fashioned way with some blocks and shims down there. Really makes me grateful for my gate jacks. There should be something like that for these doors for us DIYers that like to do stuff ourselves with no helper. It's not that I don't like a helper, I just doesn't always make sense to call one. See, that's a little snug down yonder. Don't necessarily love that really kind of needs this really kind of needs to come up a little what kind of gap do we have there on top not my best work anyway I could cut these tacks and I could drive a wedge under this to bring this up but that bottom really still needs to be a little wider because I got a closer gap down there I think I will whittle on it I think I'll cut these tacks right here and there and like potentially take a zip disc, run right in here, clean all this up and be able to push this back a little bit. Anyway, I'm gonna go to whittling, get it a little closer fitting and then, uh, then we'll see where we're at. We have made progress though, that is the good news. That is super exciting right there. All right, we got it all sorted out. A little more even on top now. I put a wedge down there to lift this up. <clears throat> and then I also took a zip disc and ran right here on this side of this plate and then I took some wedges <clears throat> some plastic wedges and put them right here so it'd push push the whole door jam over and that made the bottom even also and this gap right here we were tight <clears throat> tight down here and wide down here but we got her all sorted out and now I'm just stitch welding it I want to put enough weld 
on the container wall to this to make it like structurally sound and I am using 7018 uh, I'm not done with this I got some 60 or actually 8010 in here but you can see over here I've got 7018 that I haven't brushed off yet but uh, stitch welding it with a little bit of 8010 uphill or downhill whatever runs best and I'm just staying on this heavy material here and just letting the puddle flow over to this real thin material and then I'm going back over it with 7018 uh, just going to stitch weld the whole thing especially in here I went ahead and kind of done the same thing in here to this door jam I stitch welded it with 7018 but once I get done putting all my stitch welds on I'll go I'll take some silicone and put on both right here and right here all the way around inside and outside all right now that we got the door welded out it's time to put this door jam in and then uh, we'll be ready to put a little silicone all the way around everything put the doorknob in we'll be setting good ladies and gentlemen Liquid nails. That way it sticks good and, and uh, also keeps water from running in underneath it. You reckon that's enough, y'all think? <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. I'm not a door installation guy. I don't really know what I'm doing. I just know all this is going to be covered up and you surely it can't hurt it, right? Surely it can't hurt it. Sure, you can't too ha can't have too many liquid nails. See, it didn't even didn't even squirt out nowhere. Might need a little more. Make sure the door closes. <clears throat> oh yeah. You betcha. You betcha. Alright. Now that we're done with all that, swap out our glue here. Put in some silicone. I should probably hire a silicone guy. Not very good at it. I have learned though that this gun right here is really nice. It does make a world of difference. It's not top of the line, but it's <clears throat> not one of those uh, cheapest ones that you can get, you know, at checkout or something. You know, when you're checking out, they have stuff by the cheap stuff by the register. That's what I meant by that. That was supposed to be funny. I don't know. I feel pretty good about it for what it is. Uphill, baby. Look at me now. Pushing paper. Look at me now.
I mean, I mean, that right there is just going to have to do. <clears throat> that right there is going to have to do, ladies and gentlemen. How handy is that? Now I'm ready to do the one at our house. Hello. So that clip you just seen, I did not have the weather stripping. So these doors come with weather stripping that, that more or less clips into the the door jam of the of the door here and this clip here is with the weather stripping clipped into the door jam so check out the difference here again a very satisfying project i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you learned something if you did learn something let me know down in the comments what you learned in this video let me know what you would like to learn more about when it comes to this particular project and like i said at the beginning of this video check out our online trade school arosswelding.school and check out our main website arosswelding.com where you can find those tools list and the five hustler mindsets to keep you motivated with your mobile welding journey and if you need some soapstone that you don't have to sharpen check out our online store again they're on our website arosswelding.com under the shop tab or under the quality goods tab Thanks for watching. Have an awesome weekend. And remember, learn something every day.